So uh, just to kind of begin with, what I'm going to go through is look at what we mean by an ordinary annuity. Okay. And an ordinary annuity, there's a couple of things you want to know about that. Uh, an annuity is when you put in periodic payments. So if you were to go get an annuity, I have some annuities that will help me some with my retirement. What I do is I put a certain amount in the annuity every month. Okay, maybe it's um, uh, $100. I don't know. Even if you just put something in kind of small, and like if you're only 20 years old, and if you started with an annuity putting $100 in a month, 40 years from now, you would have, have a lot of money. You really would. You can kind of use money markets the same way. Uh, but an annuity, the one we're going to look at what is what's called an ordinary annu annuity, and that's for simplicity. The, the payments are going to be the same over and over and over again for the course of that annuity. Okay. And there's usually on annuities, there's penalties if you withdraw early and stuff like that. So you set it up making payments over a certain amount of time. All right. So first of all, the future value would be the sum of all the payments plus all the interest you earn. Okay. So what's going to be different about an annuity is the formula you're doing payments on this then. Okay, now I'm not going to go through all the details on this. I am going to show you how to set up, I'm going to show you the annuity formula and then kind of use this example to set this up. So the annuity formula is this, and that's on the, the next page too. It's got everything you want. So F, FV is the future value. So that's what your annuity is going to grow to. The, then the PMT is the payment. And then everything else means the same thing it does in the compound interest formula then. Okay. So I basically is the interest rate divided by the number of times that you do compounding. Okay. So uh, what I wanted to show you this, I'm not going to go over what this is doing so much. I want you to just kind of write down this example one says that you're going to deposit $100 every six months. So we're going to, I'm just going to show you how to use this formula. So the payment is going to be $100. Okay. And we're going to make payments every six months and it's going to pay 6% interest. So that interest rate is going to be 6%. And the com, it says you're doing semi-annually. So M is going to be two because it's semi-annually. And then you're going to make, it says over three years. So the time is three years. Okay. And it's good to write those things down. So that, that uh, example says in the annuity, you're making a hundred dollar payment twice a year. Okay. Now the, the payments are going to correspond to the, to the compounding. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the formula. So FV is the future value. So what we do is you replace the payment with $100. Then you usually have a fraction here. And then the numerator, you're going to have 1 plus the interest. The interest is 6%. So it's 0 0.06. It's semi-annually. So we divide that by 2. The exponent would then be... Uh, that N, N is MT, so what you would do is you your exponent, you're doing two payments a year over three years. So that exponent is you're making six payments over time. Then you have minus one, and then the denominator is going to be I again, so that's going to be 0 0.06 over two like that. Okay, now what you want to do with this is you want to be real careful how you put this in your calculator. I usually recommend students just do this step by step unless you're real confident you can do it all in one step. So the way I'm going to show you how to do this is we're going to calculate that. We're going to calculate this, and then we're going to put it all together. This to me is the safe way to learn how to do this. Okay, so we have the 100 here. Now, what we're going to do is in one step, I'm going to do this, and you don't have to do it this way. This is just kind of a safe way to learn how to do this. So I'm going to do the part that I have highlighted in yellow. That's 1 plus 0.06 over 2. 
close parentheses, raised to the sixth power. You can do two times three in your head and get six, minus one. And yeah, then I would write down every one of those decimals, okay? Don't be lazy about that, because if you round it, you will, your answer will be off fairly significantly on that. So we do that. Then I'm going to do the part I have in green. I'm just going to do 0 0.06 divided by 2. Yes. What's that? I'm sorry? Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Okay. I th that, those are things that if you're not watching on your calculator, easy to mess up on. So 1, point, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 2. And then raise to the 6. Then you got to get out of the exponent. Yeah, thank you. So it goes like that. Okay. So let me adjust that then. Now that's definitely not right. I did it wrong again. Let me try again. So 1 plus 0 0.06 over 2. Okay. Close parentheses. Raise to the 6th. Then go like that. So that's how you should do that. All right, now I'll write down what all those decimals are. What's that? Minus 1. Yeah, it's 1 plus i, which is 0 0.06 over 2, to the 6th power minus 1. That minus 1 is not inside the exponent. So you'd have 0 0.1940522965. And then if you do the part I have in green, 0 0.06 divided by 2, it's just going to give you 0 0.03. Okay? Now, you can now go to your calculator and do it all in one step like this. So what you could do now is go 100 times the 0 0.1940522965, like that, and then divide by 0 0.03. Okay, and then that should give the amount. So that is about $646.00. And 84 cents. Okay? All right, so that's how you do the future value of an annuity if you know the payment, you know the interest rate and the amount of times you're compounding and the, the time value like that. Now, what I'll show you in a little bit here is how your calculator does this automatically anyway, so you don't have to actually use the formula, but I do like to kind of start students off by learning how to use that formula. Okay? All right, is there any question about what I did? So I want to get you kind of comfortable with using the formula first on this, and then we'll then we'll kind of get into what we call the TVM solver. So here's the formula. You don't have to memorize the formula. That's something that I give you on the final exam. So you've got uh, the future value. This is the future value of an annuity. So you need to know PMT is the payments. Again, this is worth writing down. I is equal to R over M, and M is the compounding part, like we've been looking at. And then the other thing that's worth writing down is N. You can think of that as N is going to be equal to M times T. That's just equal to the total number of payments. Okay, and your your graphing calculator, you, can, you I'll, when I get to show you how to do this automatically, then you could kind of experiment it with it, and you could get an idea of how you could figure out if you wanted to. What would it be like if I gave an annuity $50 a month at some interest rate? How much money would it be worth in 50 years or whatever you want to try? All right, so let's put this one together. So this one says, what is the value of an annuity? So that means you're finding the future value. That's what that means. It's at the end of 20 years, so your time is 20 years. The 2,000 is a payment, so that means your payment is you're making you're uh, depositing $2,000 each year into the annuity just one time. And then it says uh, the interest rate is 8.5%. And then it's compounded annually. So what is M if it's annual? One, okay? That just means you're going to do a payment once a year, okay? So start by writing down the formula until you get really comfortable with this. So the formula we're going to use 
is FV equals PMT, and then there's a times there, and then you got this fraction, which is 1 plus I to the N minus 1 all over I like this. Now, we're going to set everything up and, again, go directly to the calculator to do this, and then the next thing I'll do is show you how to get your calculator to do this for you. All right, so the payment, you want to plug in for the payment, $2,000. Okay, then in your parentheses, you go like this. You go 1 plus the interest rate. So that interest rate's 8.5. So you want to do 0 0.085 divided by the compounding, which is 1, like that. Okay, and then the N would be you're doing one payment over 20 years, like that. So you want to know what everything means in this problem. I is R over M. So the interest rate's 8.5%. You're compounding annually. That's why there's a one there. And that's just the total number of payments there. You're, it's a 20-year annuity. You're making one payment a year like that. Okay? Then the denominator is I. So the denominator is just going to be the interest divided by one because it's annual like that. Okay? Now you can, you know, simplify this before you go to the calculator. This is what I would do, is just write this as 2,000, and then in the parentheses, if you do 1 plus 0 0.085, that's 1.085 to the 20th power minus 1. I mean, just you can simplify whatever calculations you can in your head if you want to. Then the denominator is just 0 0.085 like that. All right, do you guys understand how everything's plugged in? That's my first question to you. Because that's the whole key is you understand what's, what, the, what the numbers represent in the formula and how you get that put in. Okay. Now, again, I would do this like this is I would just kind of do this. You don't have to do this. Just if, it's, if you're comfortable doing it this way, this is a good way for students to learn how to do this. But you can do this in one step on your calculator if you want to, if you know what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one point. 0.85 raised to the 20th. Be sure you get out of the exponent and subtract 1. I've already made that mistake once today. And then just write down all those decimals. Don't be lazy about that either. So that's 2,000 times 4.11204625. And then 0.085, now you can put it all in one step on the rest of it in your calculator if you want to. So now you can go 2,000. That's your payment times 4.112046125, and then divide by 0 0.085. Okay, like that, and that would give you the amount, which would be $96,754.03. So that's the value of that annuity after 20 years of just putting in of putting in 2000 a year. Okay, like that. All right? So that's part, the first part of that problem would be that. That is your future value. The second part of the problem is what was the interest earned? Okay, so let's think about how you would do that. The interest earned. So here's what you would basically do. You would do these two things to find the amount of interest earned. You would take that amount which is in your annuity now, what were the payments that you made? There were $2,000. How many payments did you make? 20, right? Okay, you made one payment a year. So what you would do is you would do 20 times 2,000. That's the amount you're putting in. This amount right here, that's what you put in the annuity. The rest of it's interest. So what you would do then is you would just do this. You can do this on your calculator. You just take the... $96,754 and three cents, and then subtract off 20 times 2,000 is $40,000. So you actually put in $40,000. So that means the interest earned is $56,754.03. So that's how much of this annuity comes from interest. Okay, so what happens is you put in $2,000 over 20 years, 
The annuity grew to that. That's how much interest. Okay. So does that make sense? Yes. No. Tell me. Okay. So you got to know how to use the formula. Now, what we're going to learn how to do, like on your final exam, you actually don't have to do this problem this way. What I'm going to teach you next is how to use your calculator to get it automatically. Okay. With what we call the TVM solver. But you want to know how to find the interest earned. Just take the annuity amount minus the amount you put in the annuity, and that's where the interest comes from. Does that part make sense, the interest earned? Okay. All right, if you're, if you're doing annually, that just means that you're making one payment a year. Okay. This graph right here is kind of just showing you what an annuity will look like. Over time, it's not a line, it grows. So the big thing about an annuity is the further out you go in time, the bigger it grows because you're doing interest on interest. So they follow an exponential curve when you do that then, okay? All right, next page, I'm going to show you how to do this totally 100% on your calculator. We're going to do the same problem we just did, okay? And what I have you do on the final exam on annuities is you just set it up. I just have you do the setup, and then you do it on your calculator. Okay, so what I would have you do on the final exam is I would essentially just have you do this, show how you set it up in the formula, but then you can go directly to this thing that we call the TVM solver. Okay, all right, so get your calculator out and watch carefully. I tried to carefully write exactly what you, what you press in your calculator. Okay, and um, so what we're going to do the first thing we do is find the apps button. The apps button is in the second column, and that's where you're going to do what we call the TVM solver. So start by pressing the apps button, and then you should see finance coming up. Option one, when you see finance coming up, then press enter. Then you should see TVM solver come up, so press enter again. So basically, it's apps, finance, enter, TVM solver, enter. Okay, now you're going to do this over and over again on this then. All right, so here's what we're going to do. N is the number of payments. Okay, and we already did this. Okay, you're making one payment per year over 20 years. You don't have to put one times 20, but a lot of times you have to calculate that. So the problem we just did, you gave the annuity 20 payments. Okay, the interest rate, now don't move the decimal back to, just put it in. Okay, the calculator does that for you. So this is an interest rate of 8.5, but again, don't put that in. The present value is zero. You might want to write a few notes to yourself. So the annuity starts at zero, okay? You've you got to put money in the annuity. So the present value starts at zero. Okay, the payment is $2,000. So you put in the 2000 like that. The future value, you leave it alone. Don't do anything with it. Just put a zero or you can put anything in there you want to for now. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, this stands for PY stands for payments per year. You're making one payment a year. CY stands for the annual compounding. So that's one like that. So when you're learning this, that's the total number of payments. That's the interest rate. The annuity always starts at zero. That's your payment. Future value, just whatever you want to put there, okay? And then those things are both ones because it was compounded annually. All right, now let me show you how you get this answer automatically. So this is really cool the way this works. If you've got everything in, then go up to future value, get your cursor blinking on future value, and then do this, okay? What you end up doing is there's a little button on, on here that says solve, so look at your inner key. If you look above your inner key, in green it should say solve. Okay, so what you do is get that blinking. Now go alpha, enter, like that, alpha, enter, and there's the answer. Now a negative will come out, just ignore the negative. So that annuity is worth $96,754.03, just like we did a minute ago. So you can use this to automatically learn how to do figure out annuity amounts like that. Okay, that's the idea, all right? Let's just do one more thing before we move on here. Uh, let's say, for instance, that you're doing this, okay? Let's say that 
you have a retirement plan, you're going to start an annuity today. And let's say that you're going to make 12 payments over 40 years. Let's just say that you've decided you, you're going to put uh, some money in 12 times a year, 40, 40 years. Okay, now that would be the total number of payments. Okay, let's use a pretty small interest rate. Let's say like 2.5. So I'm saying you're making 480 payments. Present value zero, how much money do you want to put in the annuity? Let's make it modest. Like how about $150? Okay, you're going to put $150 a month into an annuity. Okay, the future value, just put like a zero there. And let's do 12 and 12. These two things will always be the same. So what I've just kind of created an example, you're making 480 payments at a low interest. That's about what you typically see. Uh, your payment's 150. So let's find out how much money you got in savings 40 years later. So you go to future value, get it blinking, and then you go alpha, enter. Let's see how much money. Okay, that's not bad. $123,512.81. Okay. Most of that's interest, too. Most of that is not money you put into the annuity. Okay? So that's how that works out. The further out you go in the annuity, the more that gains. All right. Are you guys following how you're doing that on the calculator? Because you want to have this down because on your final, all I'm going to have you do is set it up in the formula and then get the answer this way. Okay? It doesn't take any, any time to do that. You just have to know how to do that. Okay. So let's do this next one together. And we'll put this together in the formula, then we'll do the TVM solver, okay? So this is the way I'd have you do this on the final. So it's an ordinary annuity, so you're going to have 25 years on this. Your payment is $100, okay? And your interest is, I'm going to write this kind of like this also, the interest is 5.75%. Okay, the compounding is monthly, so M is going to be 12 in this, all right? And then it would kind of go like this. So N in the formula would be, is always, N is always equal to the number of times you compound times the time. So that's 25, there's 25 years. So you would actually do 12 times 25, okay? That would give you how many payments that you make. 25, pay, 25 years, 12 payments a year. Okay, I is going to be 0 0.0575 over 12. Now, we're going to use the formula before we go to the TVM solver. Okay, like that. All right? So, again, you don't have to worry about memorizing the formula. I'll give you the formula. You won't even have to write that on your note card for the final because I'll give you a bunch of these finance formulas. Okay? So what we would do is the payment is 100, so that goes there. Then we have times, and then your fraction goes like this, 1 plus, and then I is the interest. When you do the formula, you have to move the decimal back to divide by 12, and then N is the total number of payments, so it's 12 payments per year over 25 years, minus 1, and then the I in the bottom, again, is the interest, 0.0575 divided by 12. Now, on the final exam, you just get that set up. And then the rest of it, you go to the TVM solver. So I want you to prove to me that you know how to put the numbers in the formula, and the rest of it go to TVM. Yeah. Do we have to keep the Oh, you can go ahead and do 12 times 25 and do that, you know, at the beginning of the problem if you want to. That doesn't make any difference. What's that? Yeah, you get a note card, but you won't have to put the finance formulas because I'll give those to you. Okay? Yeah, you can use the same half sheet that you've been doing. Okay? So now we're just going to go straight to the TVM solver. So again, it's apps, finance, TVM solver. Okay? Now again, what we're going to do is the N is 12 times 25, and I think that's what you were talking about, Corey, that's 300. You're making 300 payments, so you could go ahead and put 300 in there. Okay, the interest is 5.75. If you use the TBM solver, don't use 0 0.0575, because the calculator will do that for you. Present value is zero. The annuity starts at nothing. The payments are $100. 
future value, you can put anything in you want because that's what you're going to find anyway. And then this one is compounded monthly and you're making 12 payments a year. These two numbers are always the same. Okay, now what you do, get the cursor blinking on future value, go alpha, solve, and ignore the negative. Don't worry about why the negative comes up. That's the way this thing is programmed. So the future value would be uh, sixty six thousand six hundred ninety three dollars and forty six cents. You would get the same thing if you crunched out that formula the way I showed you a few minutes ago. But that's the way I want you to handle that on the final exam is just set it up in the formula. Go to the TVM solver. Usually the way I do on the finals, I just have you set up the formula, write down what you put in the TVM solver and do it that way. There's nothing to it. Ignore the negative. Don't worry about that. You're not going to end up with negative money. You're going to end up with money, right? Don't pay any attention to that. All right, is that working okay for everybody on the calculator? It isn't on yours? You have an 83, right? Let me see if I remember what to get. You have an 83 also? No. Okay. How do you get a 300? Now make sure that payment well, is on your hand. I wonder if you, you may, I'm going to try one thing. Okay, and if it doesn't work. Oh, I got that answer. Oh, there you go. You have to put on, on, who else has an 83? You have to put a negative for the payment. I don't know why, but that's just something that, if you put in a negative 100, it'll work. What's that? Does that work? Do you, when you have an 83 plus, what do you have? William, do you have an 83? Or an 87. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Every calculator is sometimes a little different. So some of the, the older ones you had to put a negative in for the payment. Okay, I, I can't remember why that is. It's just the way it's it's programmed. Okay, is it working okay for everybody else? Good. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's kind of how you want to do that. Now the next thing we're gonna look at it is just talk about what a sinking fund is. And that's really kind of what we've been doing anyway. So um, I'm going to do one more here. <clears throat> and then this time we'll just uh, set it up and then do the TVM solver. So this one we have 1500 deposited. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see if you can get everything put in your calculator okay on this one. Okay, so let's see. This one, the payment on this one is $1,500. Okay, so let's see. 30 years, and you're compounded quarterly this time. Okay, so what N is going to be is it's going to be 4 times 30. That's going to be 120. You're making four payments a year for 30 years, so you're making 120 payments. Okay, yeah, you can put it in four times 30 and it'll calculate for us. That's the way I always do it. And then the interest is 0.079 over four. Okay, now again, I'm just going to set it up in the formula when I put this together. So the formula you'll have the payment is $1,500 times, and then a big fraction bar, then it'll be one plus the interest over four for quarterly. And then the total number of payments is 120, 4 times 30, minus 1. And then the denominator is I. Whenever you have I, do the decimal and then divide by the 4 for compounding. So I want you to be able to set it up, then go directly to the TVM. Okay, this one will be put in like this then. Got to put something in for future value. So you go like this. So you're making uh, quarterly payments for 30 years. So you're making 120 payments. The interest is 7.9. Don't move the decimal back on the TVM. Presents always zero. Payments are 1,500. Uh, future value, you can put a zero or anything you want. And then these, then you're doing quarterly payments, compounded for a year. Those last two numbers are always the same. And make sure that, that you have that on end, because what that does is that does the interest at the end of the compounding period, 
instead of the beginning. Now just go like this, like we've been doing, go to future value, get it blinking, and then go alpha, enter, and then that'll give the amount again, uh, ignore the negative. So that would be $717, 958 and one cent. So that's how much money is in your annuity. Okay? Yes. The four times 30. Okay. That, now what N is, are you talking about this right here? Oh, yeah, that's multiplication. Okay, so it's four payments over 30 years. So it's 120 years. N is the number of payments you make into the annuity in total. That's the idea. Quarterly payments. Four payments a year over 30 years is 120 payments, right? That's where that comes from. Okay? All right? And everything else pretty standard how that goes. All right. Now we're going to do the interest earned on this. Okay? So... Whenever you do the interest earned, again, not all of that 717000 was money you put in, just some of it is. So the interest earned, what you do is you always do this. You take the amount of the annuity, which is $717,958 minus how much you put in. Okay, well, how much did you put in? Let's see, how many payments did you make? You made 120 payments. How much were the payments? $1,500, okay? So remember, you're subtracting off what you put in. So I'm going to go to a clear screen and just do 120 payments times 1,500. And that means that you put in $180,000, so that's how much money came out of your pocket, and then you just subtract those two values, and that will tell you how much interest was earned on that annuity. Okay, so I just do this, $717,958.01 minus $180,000, and that would be how much interest. That's a lot of interest, and that's what happens on these annuities if, they're, if they go out for a long time period. All right, so that's how much interest was earned off of that annuity. That's a high interest rate, though, too. <clears throat> All right, so that's the idea. All right, does that make sense to everybody, how I figured out the interest that was earned on the annuity? Okay, you want to know how to do that for sure. Okay. All right, now the sinking fund is a way that you find payments. So I'm going to finish up by going over the idea of a sinking fund. Basically what the idea is, a sinking fund, you're going to figure out what your payments are. So again, I give you this formula. Listen up. I'm not done yet. Like I say, I always give you your money's worth in here, or try to. So I give you this formula. All it is is you're solving that annuity formula for payment. You're going to use the TVM to find a payment also. So the sinking fund payment formula, which I'll give you, is this. So if you had a goal for your future value, your future value would be like, okay, I want a million dollars for retirement. I got this interest rate. You could figure out what your payments would have to be. Okay. That's the idea behind a sinking fund. Okay. So uh, let's do, I think, one of these, and then we'll do it on the TVM solver. Again, what I want you to kind of be able to do is set everything up. Okay. All right. So this one goes like this. This says a company estimates it'll have to replace a piece of equipment at a cost of 800,000 in five years. So our time is going to be five years. The future value is going to be 800,000 this time. Okay. And let's see. It also says you need to have this money available in five years. A sinking fund is established and you have a uh, your interest rate is going to be 6.6% .6 and compounded monthly. So that would be 12 like that. So we're going to set up the formula before we go to the TVM solver. All right, so the interest rate, remember, I is always R over M. So we're going to move the decimal back to to get 0 0.066 divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly. 
N is always the total number of payments. So you're making 12 payments times five years. So you're going to make 60 payments. That's like paying off a car. If you have a five-year car loan, 60 payments would be your five, how many payments you make in five years. So we're going to plug into this formula. So it goes like this. The future value goes there. So that's 800,000. Okay, so we got that put in, and then times, and then the numerator is I, so I is 0.066 divided by 12. The denominator, just exactly what it says to do, is 1 plus 0.066 divided by 12. The total number of payments is 60, and then minus 1. Now, you can do that, you know, in your calculator using the formula, or you can do the TVM solver, which I think is what you would prefer doing. All right, so that's how that one gets set up. So what I'm gonna do next is show you how to put this in the TVM solver. It's the same idea, basically. So I've already put on your notes what you wanna type up. All right, so basically this time, again, you wanna go to apps and finance, get everything set up. So you're gonna do this, five times 12, or you can just put in the 60. So you're making 60 payments. The interest rate was 6.6. .6. And don't move the decimal back. The present value of the seeking fund is zero. They start at zero. It's like an annuity. The payment, just leave alone or put a one or a zero. What You can put anything in there you want to for now. That's up to you. Okay. Now, the future value is 800,000. So now you're putting that in there. And then your um, 12 payments a year, compounded monthly, will go like that. So what you do now is since you're finding the payment, is you do this. You go to the, uh, get the cursor blinking on payment, and then go alpha, solve, and then ignore the negative. So what you would end up getting is, you're basically your payment would be $11,290 and 42 cents. Now this is a business that's saving up, you know, because that for in a fund, so they're putting that amount of money in every month to save up so that they'll have that $800,000 in, um, in five years. So the only difference with that is you're solving for payment given, you're given the future value. Okay, does everybody understand that okay? Okay, all right. So let's do this last problem on here, and that's as far as I'll take this today. Okay, how much interest earned? Actually, I don't have time to do this because that says interest earned in the last year, so we'll do that one next time. Does everybody understand what I did as far as the TVM on that last problem? Okay, TVM's cool. It's a really cool, cool tool. When I went and bought my house like years ago, 15 years ago, I took my trusty TI with me to figure out if the payments were being done correct. Okay? You can do stuff like that. You can experiment. You can figure out all kinds of stuff with that TVM solver.